the red dragon trundle. And if you're like me, you probably think that's a funny word to use for a keyboard. So we're just going to call it the red dragon K668. This is a full size mechanical keyboard and it is hot swappable. And also it has chroma RGB dust proof red switches. And yes, it also has RGB. But regardless of the funniest packaging, we're going to need to take this apart. All right, let's go ahead and unbox the Red Dragon K668. The first thing we're met with falling out of the package is your keycap and switch puller. If we keep pulling our keyboard, we're also met with a random bundle of what looks like switches. There's actually eight in here, I believe. And then also we can see our USB-C cable. Um, this is a rather large end of a USB-C cable, but it is, however, pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and set that aside as well. And then we'll continue pulling out our keyboard here, uh, which will actually be a bit of a surprise. Uh, something I didn't actually know was this keyboard also comes with two full sets of keycaps. Now, honestly, after unboxing hundreds of keyboard in my time in the hobby, I don't think I've ever unboxed one that gave you a full set of secondary keycaps. Of course, there's keyboards that have different novelty keys or specialty keys or different alphas or something specific, just not a full second set, which is kind of unique, which brings us back to the keyboard itself, which is inherently not super unique. It is your standard full size mechanical keyboard. It is hot swappable, which is nice and it's detachable USB-C, which is also cool. It does have dual stage flip up feet so you can adjust your typing angle, which is always a nice touch. Uh, they are plastic, but they lock in place pretty well. It has plenty of rubber pads on it, so it won't slide around your desk, which is a really nice touch. I do love seeing that. It has a product sticker here in the middle, which calls the Red Dragon Trundle, which again, that name, such a weird thing because, you know, Trundle doesn't mean keyboard. The back design is nothing special, and the front design also is nothing really that special. I do, however, like the muted blue look. That matte blue is a cool thing. I'm not a huge fan of the orangish brown, but one place that does stand out it's got really nice RGB. Now the flickering you see can't be seen with the naked eye. It's due to the frame rate of the camera, but the RGB on this is quite bright. It does have software to control everything as well as native support to use function keys. But after looking at it, let's go ahead and hear out sounds stock out of the box. So now that you've seen it and heard it, it's time to take it apart and address some of the issues. First of all, it's clacky in a bad way, and it seems really hollow and inconsistent. And the first issue would be these keycaps. While they are nice to the eye, they are shine through, and the colors all the way around the keycap, them being shine through, it does result in them being very thin. It's a common issue with shine through keycaps. And with them being plastic and thin, it doesn't provide a really nice typing experience. It doesn't feel good, nor does it really sound good. So we're gonna to need to change those out. Next up will be the switches. The switches on the website are referred to as Otamu Reds. Now here they are branded Red Dragon, but I assume they are the 40 gram Otamu style switch. They are a box style switch, which they say is dustproof, 
which doesn't really mean they're dustproof, but they do provide less stem wobble. They are three pin, however, the board does support three pin, five pin, but these are definitely not lubed and you can feel it. They're a bit scratchy and we wanna fix that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get all our keycaps and switches out of the board. Now that we've got our keycaps and switches out using the included keycap and switch puller, which honestly was a really easy process. We can see that we have north facing RGB and our three pin and five pin hot swap sockets. It also appears that we're gonna have a bunch of Phillip head screws to take out to get this case separated. Now this is really easy. Just make sure you have a bowl so you don't lose any of the screws because you're gonna need to replace them. But once you take them all out, it's time to separate the case itself. Now, honestly, this can be a painful part. The easiest way I found to separate the case is you take a small pry tool and you'll pry across the front edge right here. This is pretty much the easiest way to separate it. Once you have these clips undone in the front, don't worry about this little middle portion, only the edges. So make sure you pry these clips right here first. And once you do so, it gives you enough leverage to pry across the back. It's super simple. It's just figuring out where to insert it first is always the pain. So if you go across the edges here, you'll see that you've created a separation point and then you just go across the back with your hands. You lift backwards and up and it comes undone in no time. Now, honestly, there's no right or wrong way to take apart a case. If working around the case in multiple locations until you get it apart works for you, or if lifting from one side and traveling around it is better choice, it's really preference. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, the only wrong way to do it is simply just rip it apart so you ruin all the clips. Now, you do have to put this all back together, so you want to make sure you don't do that. But once you do have it all separated, this is what you get. You can see that we have our plastic case here, and it also is the plate, and it also has our clip-in stabilizers. Uh, those do need some work as well, a little bit of fine-tuning and lubing, but now we're at the keyboard. So we'll set that aside and go to our next portion. Here, you can see that we have some switch foam. It's a really nice touch, something I didn't really expect, but it is nice to see. Next, we have our PCB. There is no daughter board or anything like that to worry about, so you can take it straight out of the case. Here you see the top side and then the back side. We don't have any foam, pad, or film, so we're definitely gonna need to tape mod this. And then we have our case itself, and it's empty. This would be the reason it feels and sounds so hollow. Also here, we have our side RGB diffusers because of the RGB on the side. This was interesting to me because these seem to be pretty locked in place. Uh, I'm sure you could pry them out, but just pulling on them, they didn't budge. So I didn't want to force it. And also there's no reason to take them out. So I figured I'd just leave them in there. But we're definitely gonna have to address this. And for this, I'm gonna choose EVA foam. It's an affordable solution to make the keyboard not sound so hollow. And it also provides a nice sound profile. It's also super easy to work with. You can cut it with pretty much anything as it cuts like butter. And then also, if you don't feel like poking a bunch of holes, you kind of can just push the holes through it. It's really simple and it's really easy. If you ever need a guide or anything like that, you can gently press on the EVA foam and it'll give you an outline of everything you need to cut out if you wanted to do it super, super professionally. But here, we're just gonna lay it in here and we're just gonna push down and you'll see that our posts just pop right through. It's really simple. It doesn't take much pressure, much force, kind of does it itself. So for me, EVA foam, and then I'll grab an X-Acto blade just to trim it to fit. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty as long as it gets the job done. So grab your X-Acto blade, be careful of cutting, and get your EVA foam in. All right, so after we're finished with our case, we're gonna move over to our PCB. Here you can see we're applying masking tape to the back of our PCB, also known as painter's tape. Uh, we're gonna do two layers, and this will also help with the sound while we're typing. It's a super simple mod, it's really easy to do, and it's one of my favorites. So we'll just trim the sides here, and then we're gonna flip our PCB back over, grab a small screwdriver, and we're just gonna make starter holes for our posts through all these big holes. If you don't know where the posts are going to go through, just focus on the large holes that are through the PCB. Again, you can hollow these out and make them full on holes, but I found just poking little starter holes and using the posts is pretty easy. Next, we're gonna go back over to our plate and we're gonna pull our stabilizers out. 
So grab a small set of tweezers or a small screwdriver and you'll just press the front tab in and your stabilizers will pop right out. You do wanna be careful because you don't wanna bend the bar of your stabilizers. That's really important. You need them to stay even and stay consistent throughout the stabilizer itself. Here we're gonna examine all of our stabilizers and just as I thought, some of them are very lubed and some of them are not lubed at all. So we're gonna to need to adjust that. To take them apart, you simply turn the bar 90 degrees, unclip it and pull it straight out. Now with this, you'll take your stem out of the housing here. And once you have it out of the housing, sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain. But once you have it the housing, you'll see that on one side, there's two square holes. And on the back side, you'll see one hole. Now this is a key thing to remember. Two holes go in the front, one hole goes in the rear. So two holes is where the bar goes, one hole goes in the back. It might be a little funny, but that's how I remember it. So just line up your two holes and it slides right in and you'll be able to put your bar back in, no problem. Now it's time to move the lubing. We're gonna grab our housing, grab a small brush with 205G0 on it, and we'll paint the inside of our housing. Remember, just a few swipes, applying an even light coat on each wall, as well as the stem, applying a light coat on both sides, and that's all you need for those. Once you're finished, you can assemble all of those back together so you can get ready for your bar. Now, I'll show you how I do my bar here for demonstration. I grab my bar, I grab dielectric grease, and then I insert the bar just past the curve, applying an even coat of dielectric grease on each side. This is how I prefer to do it. There's many ways you can do it. You can do it with 205, you can do it with other lubes like 105, but this is how I prefer it. Now, this is just for demonstration purposes, because I don't usually assemble them this way in order. I do all of my housings and then I do the bars. But once you have everything lubed, you can go ahead and reinsert your bar back and then you click it back in place. And as simple as that. After reinstalling my stabilizers, I did notice that one side of two of the stabilizers was a bit wobbly inside the case itself. Now, this can give you undesired sounds and rattling when typing. And if so, you can add a little tape in that hole to make them tighter so you don't have that issue. But for this, it really didn't affect the typing or sound experience, so we left it as that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on reassembling the keyboard itself. First, we'll place our PCB back in on top of our EVA foam. We're gonna go ahead and punch through where our posts are by adding a little pressure to our PCB. And then we'll grab our foam and then our top of our case, which is also our plate. After you press that back together, it's time for the screws. You're just gonna screw everything back together and then you'll be ready for switches. And you know, that's the fun part, lubing switches. So let's go ahead and do that. Grabbing your favorite switch opener, we'll go ahead and open our switches up. We'll grab our top housing and put it in our first bucket. We'll grab our stem and we'll go ahead and see if there's any indication of lube on it. And these, there's not. Unfortunately, they are bone dry. So we're gonna have to lube all of these. We'll put that in our second bucket. We'll grab our spring to see if there's any indication of lube there, and there's not. And then we'll lastly check our bottom housing, again, looking to see if there's any traces of lube, and there's not. To remedy that, we're gonna grab our 205G0 on a small brush. I'll do three strokes on each one of the slats, and then we're gonna do inside the hole and then around the world. The beauty of lubing linears is you don't have to worry about hitting anything that might mess up the typing experience. Next, we'll do our stems and I'm just gonna do each side. Remember, even coating, you don't wanna over lube. It's easier to go back and lube than take lube away from switches. After you're done with all of those, I move on to my springs, which for me, I bag lube. It's really simple, really easy. Pour all your springs into a bag and then grab super lube for this, since it's a full size, we're gonna use 20 drops. It's a bit more than I usually use, but again, I don't build a lot of full sizes. We wanna make sure there's an even coating of lube on all of our springs. So 20 drops, and then we'll go ahead and seal this up, and then we're gonna shake for about three minutes straight. And I know it seems excessive, and your arm or wrist or hand or forearm or whatever you use to shake with might be a little tired, but we wanna make sure there's an even coating through it all. Now, after we spent two hours looping switches, it's time to reinsert our switches. Now I have to say that this is probably one of the easy experience for a plastic keyboard in the $40 to $60 range to reinsert switches. 
and also take them out, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's a bit more painful than others, but this was really easy overall. They went in nice and smooth, they came out nice and smooth, which is a great touch. Now, once you have your switches in, it's time to move to keycaps. And for this build and this commission, it was requested that we do something Nezuko themed. So we just got Nezuko keycaps. These are a thick PPT XDA profile keycap and the printing on it is pretty great. The little chibi characters look great. And even more exciting is the pattern keycaps. The pattern keycaps usually can come distorted or maybe missing colors depending on the sides. But this, we have color from side to side and edge to edge, and the pattern's not distorted at all. Putting it all together, and this is what it looks like. The white on white, the muted black and blue, the muted purple. I think the theme overall looks great. And taking a closer look on the desk, it just looks cool. I'm really stoked for this keyboard build, and I like how it came out visually. But lastly, let's hear how it sounds. Hey, if you made it this far, I want to say thank you for watching and please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel and I would love you very much. Now, if you want to check out any of the products featured in this video, they're linked in the description below. And that's it. The end. Thank you for watching and keep keyboarding.